Embark on a captivating journey as we delve into one of humanity's greatest questions. Are we a dual existence of spirit and matter, or are we purely physical beings? In this thought-provoking video, we explore the intriguing possibility that even after our earthly existence ceases, our essence transcends to another dimension, where it continues to thrive. Get ready to explore the enigmatic nature of our true selves and immerse yourself in this profound exploration that has captivated minds throughout generations. The discovery of consciousness surviving death would have profound implications. It would reshape our understanding of reality, challenge the boundaries of life and death, and blur the lines between the material and the spiritual. Our perception of existence would expand, inviting us to explore unseen forces and realms. It would infuse our lives with a renewed sense of purpose and interconnectedness, fostering a deep appreciation for the sanctity of life. Ultimately, it would redefine our understanding of who we are and the significance of our journey in the universe. The fact that we exist and we are conscious gives us the ability to perceive the world through our senses, ourselves, and others, and to recognize that we live in a massive habitat that we call the universe, as David Chalmers put it. Right now, you have a movie playing inside your head. It's an amazing multitrack movie. It has 3D vision and surround sound for what you're seeing and hearing right now, but that's just the start of it. Your movie has smell and taste and touch. It has a sense of your body, pain, hunger. It has emotions, anger and happiness. It has memories, like scenes from your childhood playing before you. And it has this constant voiceover narrative in your stream of conscious thinking. At the heart of this movie is you experiencing all this directly. This movie is your stream of consciousness, the subject of experience of the mind and the world. We know that to have this stream of consciousness, the brain must be highly organized. Consciousness is one of the most mysterious things in the world, sustained by complex biological processes, and we still have no clue how consciousness emerges. This is something that scientists have called the hard problem of consciousness. The near-death experience research field is exploring how people who are declared clinically dead have lucid experiences, out-of-body experiences, and travel to a metaphysical realm. From a materialistic and biological perspective, there would be no possibility to experience any form of conscious perception once death has been declared. The heart has stopped beating, one is not breathing, and the brain isn't recording any electrical activity. Dr. Peter Fennick, a neurophysiologist, says that when you have a cardiac arrest, if you monitor brain waves or the electrical activity of the brain, you find out that within eight seconds it's almost absent, and it's absent through the brain, so you don't have little pockets of activity. Once the heart has stopped the brain ceases to function. Now we know from our neuroscience that you can't have experiences without a functioning brain. So, once the brain function has stopped, then all experience must stop. If it doesn't stop for any reason, then you've made a very strong statement and that is that the mind and the brain are not the same. So, how can people who have been declared clinically dead experience any form of consciousness? How can one have any form of consciousness if the brain isn't functioning? As rational beings, our duty is to explore both viewpoints through scientific studies, seeking to understand whether consciousness is solely a product of the brain or if it exists beyond it. We should embrace the evidence that consistently emerges. Science, being the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, experimentation, and testing theories against the obtained evidence, allows us to gain valuable knowledge about the nature of consciousness, even when our biological functions have ceased. Doctors have studied individuals who have experienced cardiac arrest to obtain such insights. Dr. Sam Parnia, director of the Human Consciousness Project at the University of Southampton, a critical care doctor and director of resuscitation research at the Stony Brook University School of Medicine is known for his work on near-death experiences and cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Dr. Parnia says that, what we study is not people who are near death. We study people who have objectively died, and therefore, what we've understood is that the experience that these people have of going beyond the threshold of death, entering the period after death for the first few tens of minutes or hours of time, provides us with an indication of what we're all likely to experience when we go through death. We're entering the realm of scientific studies of consciousness, embarking on a journey of understanding with open minds to whatever we may discover. Exploration is deeply embedded in humanity, and we have made significant leaps in understanding various aspects of our physical reality. It is fascinating how our expanding knowledge has broadened our perspective on our existence in the universe. Now, we stand on the verge of making groundbreaking discoveries about the nature of our consciousness. 
One of the most compelling cases supporting the idea of consciousness surviving death is the remarkable near-death experience of Pam Reynolds. Her story has captivated researchers and skeptics alike, offering intriguing insights into the nature of consciousness beyond the physical realm. Pam Reynolds, a musician, underwent a groundbreaking surgical procedure known as a standstill operation to treat a large aneurysm in her brain. The surgery was performed by Dr. Robert Spetzler, a legendary figure in the field of neurosurgery renowned for his expertise and innovative techniques. Pam Reynolds had a balloon of blood located at the base of her brain, presenting a significant challenge for the neurosurgeons. Through the revolutionary surgery designed by Dr. Spetzler, Pam's body temperature would be lowered to between 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, her heart and breathing would be stopped, brain activity would cease, and the blood would be drained from her brain. In a nutshell, she would be clinically dead for an hour during the operation. As Dr. Spetzler said, we want the brain activity to stop and any measurable output that the body puts out really disappears completely, so that you don't have any measurable neuronal activity, whatsoever and things get even more interesting. During the preparation for the radical surgery, the patient is placed under anesthesia, the eyes are taped shut, and clicking devices are placed in the ears to monitor the brain. The patient is covered, with only the area where the surgery is to be performed left exposed. While under the surgery, with no brain activity, as drive, Spetzler declared, with the brain literally not registering any activity, Pam heard a sound. An unpleasant sound. It was the sound of the instruments used by the doctors to access the tumor that was located deep inside her brain. Pam remembers that she had popped out of her body. She was seeing her body, knowing that it was hers. Pam said that the drilling instrument resembled an electric toothbrush. She heard a discussion between Dr. Spetzler and the cardiovascular surgeon, a discussion that was later confirmed by doctors after the surgery. Dr. Spetzler said that I don't think that the observations she made were based on what she experienced that she went on the operating room, they were not just available to her. At that stage of the operation, nobody can observe, here in that state and I find it inconceivable that your normal senses, such as hearing, let alone on the fact that she had clicking modules in each ear, that there was any way for her to hear these through normal auditory pathways. Diving into Pam's experience, she said that she felt a presence, and when she turned around to look, she saw a tiny point of light. She was pulled by the light, experiencing a physical sensation. As she got closer to the light, she began to discern different figures and people. She heard her grandmother calling her, and Pam went to her. It felt great, and she also saw her uncle, with whom she had a special connection. Pam mentioned seeing many people she knew and some she didn't know. She asked if the light was God, but the answer was no. The response she received was that the light is what happens when God breathes. She was reminded that it was time to go back, even though the sensation in the light with her family was absolutely great. Dr. Spetzler said, I don't have an explanation for it. I don't know how it is possible for it to happen considering the physiological state she's in. At the same time, I have seen so many things that I cannot explain that I won't be so arrogant to say that there is no way that it can happen. In reflecting on Pam Reynolds' near-death experience, Dr. Spetzler acknowledged the remarkable nature of her encounter. The fact that an experienced neurosurgeon like Dr. Spetzler recognizes the profound implications of Pam's experience underscores the extraordinary and thought-provoking nature of her near-death encounter. Pam's case defies conventional explanations, challenging the notion that consciousness is solely a product of brain activity. Dr. Spetzler's endorsement of the authenticity of her experience adds credibility to the possibility of consciousness existing beyond the physical body, igniting further curiosity and raising profound questions about the nature of consciousness. By examining cases like Pam Reynolds and considering the insights provided by experts like Dr. Spetzler, we gain valuable perspectives that challenge our current understanding of consciousness and its potential transcendence beyond our physical existence. We've come a long way, embarking on a journey of humanity through time and space. It all began 13.7 billion years ago with the Big Bang, the event that gave birth to the universe. Life itself is fascinating, regardless of the obstacles we encounter. The mere fact that we can exist as conscious beings, with individual perspectives, capable of experiencing emotions and enjoying our existence through continuous acquisition of information and knowledge, makes life unique, valuable, 
and special. We find ourselves amidst the vastness of the universe, a universe estimated to contain hundreds of billions of galaxies, each potentially housing an equal number of stars. Yet, we are conscious. We are experiencing life in its entirety. How amazing it would be to know that our journey as conscious beings isn't limited to this existence, and that we have the opportunity to transcend our consciousness from this physical body to a metaphysical realm. Even if our lives are confined to a brief period of time, which is like a droplet of water compared to the age of the universe, life would still be remarkably precious. Regardless of our beliefs regarding whether consciousness solely arises from the brain or if we possess a dual nature of spirit and matter, I invite you to appreciate life, cherish people, and embrace knowledge. This journey we embark on defines our individuality. There is no one like you. We are all unique and valuable simply by existing. Continue to be amazed by life, and who knows what you might discover during your precious time in our extended home. The Universe